The Intercept has the scoop on a really disgusting story involving Speaker Paul Ryan. So they report here, just hours after passing the very first bill of the new Congress on Wednesday, one designed to roll back a range of environmental and consumer regulations, House Speaker Paul Ryan celebrated with a corporate lobbying firm at a fundraiser for his campaign committee. The vote on the Midnight Rules Relief Act of 2017 took place at 4.48 p.m. on Wednesday. The fundraiser at the offices of the BGR Group, a major lobbying firm, started at 7 p.m. <sighs> Think about how disgusting that is. So this guy votes, uh, by the way, to loosen regulations on mining and drinking water. Because, you know, arsenic and shit. Who cares? Loosen, loosen those regulations. It's not the water that I'm drinking. It's the water somebody in uh, random uh, Midwest places drinking. So, yeah, forget about that. Don't worry about those regulations. You can get rid of them. I got to take care of my corporate buddies here and give them BJs behind a dumpster at a Denny's. I mean, come on, man. You're going to go in there and your first vote on the first bill of the new session is a, a wet blowjob to your lobbyist buddies. And then you have the nerve... To, you know, go take a shower, hop in your car, or who knows, maybe you have a driver because you're a rich prick and you're a congressman, of course, Speaker of the House. Uh, and then they're going to take you to the lobbying firm and you're going to party with those lobbyists. Guys, they're not even trying anymore. Like, it used to be the case that, sure, politicians were corrupt, but there was this sense of they knew what they were doing was wrong, so they had to try to hide it. And, but now it's like, it's been baked into the rules. Like the corruption has been largely allowed, you know, under the guise of uh, campaign contributions and super PACs and things of that nature. So since they've, uh, the Supreme Court did that and it's become so commonplace, Paul Ryan's like, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to vote to help out my lobbyist buddies and screw over the American people. And then I'm going to brazenly just go to their fucking get-together, and if people report on it, so what? They report on it. I got lobbyist friends. What's it to you? Well, that's everything, Paul. That's fucking everything. You know, people wonder why. Congress has like a 9% approval rating. On a good day, it's like 21%. I mean, seriously, seriously, let that soak in. Let that marinate in your brain. Let that swirl around your head a little bit. On a good day, Congress is in the 20 20-something percentile range when it comes to favorability. How can that possibly be in a democracy? Because everybody knows on some level, they're not representing us. They act like a giant fucking mafia. <laughs> That's what they do. They find a way to get you to tolerate them, to go vote for them, because, ah, oh, whatever, this person is the lesser of two evils. And then as soon as they get to Washington... All of the legislation they push for doesn't help you, it helps their donor buddies, their connected friends, the elites. And again, so you might say, well, that's just, you know, speculation. Is it really speculation? I mean, look at this. Is this really, does this sound like conjecture to you? I'm, I'm giving you the facts of a story right here, proving my case. But furthermore, we've also discussed um, the Princeton study, which found that the U.S. is uh, functioning as an oligarchy more than a democracy. Because when you track... What the uh, American people want, what average people want in polling, it hardly ever, ever translates into the policy that we get. So then who's setting the agenda? Who's really making the laws? Who's getting their ideas uh, implemented? The rich, the elite. So again, functioning as an oligarchy. And people like Paul Ryan, I guess what annoys me so much about a guy like Paul Ryan is that... He's such a product of the system that I don't even think it occurs to him that he's doing something really, really wrong. Like, it doesn't occur to him that the way he's acting is how a bad person acts. Like, you, you're supposed to be principled and get to Washington and, you know, try to implement the platform you ran on because you think it's the best thing for the American people. But it's not like a debate of competing philosophies and ideas and concepts in Washington anymore. It's just a debate of, of dueling donors. Hey, my donors, I'm a Democrat, so my donors, the teachers unions and and lawyers and and unions, we're combating the Republicans whose donors are, and Wall Street for the Democrats, to be fair, 
Uh, but for the Republicans, well, you know, they have they have Wall Street even more. They have big oil. So it's just competing. Hey, which ones of our donors are going to get the best uh, favors? And they just go back and forth on that. And a guy like Paul Ryan, it's like it it looks like it doesn't keep him up at night. And he never has that thought of like, hey, maybe I'm really doing something fucked up here by ignoring the people and not caring about the concerns of the people, and doing the bidding of the donors. It just looks like he's totally accepted, and he's like, well, this is what it is, this is how it works. And even if you laid it out for him and explained it, look, man, here's why this is wrong. Like, look, the American people want to increase in the minimum wage, the American people want to get out of all the stupid fucking wars, they want to raise the tax on the rich. Look at these polling numbers. I, I don't, still don't think he'd care. He'd just be like, oh. no, I, I don't know about you, but I work for uh, BGR Group, the, uh, the lobbying firm over here who I'm buddy-buddy with. Understand that no, no real problem is going to be addressed until we fix this cancer in the system. The cancer is the money in the system, the legal money in the system. I want to build a wall of separation. You know how we have a wall of separation between church and state? It's a secular country. I want to build a wall of separation between lobbyist and state. We need to ban private money in the political system publicly uh, financed campaigns, which is called clean elections. It's called that for a reason. And then guess what happens? Virtually overnight, you're going to have politicians that are going to represent who? The people. Why? Because you just paid for their campaign. So all the money for them to run their campaign just came from a, a random grandma in Kentucky, a construction worker in South Dakota. Like that's so that when the money comes from them, well, then they're going to represent them. But if the money's coming from, you know, Exxon Mobil and some random hedge fund on Wall Street, who the fuck are they going to represent? So if you ban the private money in the system, you have uh, clean elections, which is public financing. Well, then you're much more likely to get politicians that represent the people. And uh, Paul Ryan, he would have no chance. Guys like Paul Ryan, most of the politicians you see in Washington right now, they would be voted out like that under a system where we actually had public financing because they're no longer they're the thing that gives them a leg up on everybody else right now is that they sell out the most they sell out the most they raise the most money so they get their name out there the most they buy the most ads they get the higher name recognition and then they get elected that's why over 90 percent of the time the person who raises the most money ends up winning when it comes to a congressional race so when you take the money out of the system, guys like Paul Ryan are gone. There's no way they're going to survive because they're going to be up against people who actually have a platform, a philosophy that tries to, you know, uh, care about the American people and implement what they want to implement. So they're going to, they would never fight to do it, which is why we have to go around them. You know, you could do a constitutional amendment through Congress, but that's the way, I mean, they're the, they're the problem. You can't go to the problem to find the solution. So what we have to do is go around them. And thankfully, the, in the Constitution, there's a way that we could do that. We could do a constitutional convention through the states and uh, then get a, a clean election amendment to the Constitution, which bans private money, which would just seriously cripple corruption in the system. So Paul Ryan, I mean... He's one of the worst offenders. He doesn't even care. He doesn't even care. Yeah. So I voted to help the lobbyists and help the corporations and snub the American people. Fuck your clean water. Fuck your mining regulations. And I'm going to go party with them. That's what I'm going to do. And we're probably going to have a really fucking expensive dinner on the taxpayer's dime. And um, I'll uh, laugh because I'm rich. And uh, I don't give a shit about any of you. They're sending the message loud and clear. And it's time for us to hear it and act on it.